Um, it probably would help if I unmuted myself. Sorry about that. So welcome everyone. To give you a preview of our agenda. We've got a pretty packed agenda today. Um, I'm going to do a few quick updates uh, about the upcoming Harvard Symposium. Welcome a new board member. Um, mentioned that we have a uh, an ITP2 user interface rewrite underway, which is pretty exciting. Um, remind folks about our ontology uh, and ELT working groups. And then the, the most of the lion's share of this will be a presentation from Jeff Klan and Peter Rice talking about um, some pretty exciting um, things, a new release coming out for both ITB2 and Transmart, um, and then an overview of the ITB2 and Transmart um, release uh, integration that work that has been done over the past year. So we have decided, normally we have our June symposium in Boston. Um, last two years, it's been virtual. Um, we've decided to shift this to September for a number of reasons. But I just, I just wanted to, to I know it's, it's cold probably where most of you are. And I just want to tell you that September is a, a wonderful month to come to uh, Boston. So definitely come to Boston, but don't come for just a couple of days. Come for the whole week. And this is why we made this, this shift. And we're hoping that the, the COVID will, will uh, give us a break during this, this time as well. Um, but we do plan to be in person in Boston. Um, the ITB Transport uh, Symposium will be um, on a Monday and Tuesday, September 19 and 20. Um, and it's also, there's a, a lineup of a number of great things happening in Boston that whole week. So uh, the, to the September 20th is the annual Precision Medicine Conference that um, is hosted by Zach Kohani. And that is um, a highly, um, lots and lots of folks come to that, that conference. So uh, it brings a, a lot of, of, of people to, to Boston. And this year, the um, annual Red Cap Conference is also gonna be in Boston, which is pretty exciting a little bit later in the week. So I say, come plan, spend the whole week in, in, um, in Boston and you know, Friday through Sunday, you know, enjoy yourself because it's, it's just a wonderful place to be. Um, I would also like to welcome uh, a new board member. Uh, Jamal Matthew is, has just been um, elected to the board. J Jamal is uh, a longtime member of the I2B2 um, community. Um, she was at Dana-Farber Cancer Institute um, where she worked very closely with um, the I2B2 team. She went to the University of uh, Massachusetts and now she is the uh, um, uh, chief biomedical um, informatics uh, um, person at the University of Wisconsin. So wonderful addition um, that really brings a, a very uh, great academic focus to our board. So I'm excited to, um, to announce her. Um, I wanted to, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail here, but I just wanted to, to make sure that folks knew that we were in the process of rewriting the ITB2 user interface. Lots of great stuff. I'm not going to go through the details here, um, but it's underway. Um, the timeline is around nine months to get at least the first release out. Um, you know, the idea is to, um, to, to, to strip off some of the older technology to give it a, a fresh look and feel um, and also enable a whole bunch of, of great new features. So there is a team working on this. We would really welcome your, um, your input and, and you know, potentially even participation in this. Um, if you're interested, the way to get involved is we have a monthly user interface working group that's, that's gonna be writing point on this. Um, the meeting is actually tomorrow at noon. So please join. Um, if you wanna just join the Zoom, the, the Zoom link is here. Um, we can make sure that this is posted on the website. If you want to join as a regular meeting, you can do that on the website as well, and then you can get added to all of the meetings. So would love to, to have more um, involvement from the community um, around this. Um, also, just to mention that we have an ETL and ontology working group that meets on a monthly basis. Um, ETL is chaired by Mike Mendez, um, second Tuesday of, of the month at 10 o'clock. And Ontology Working Group is now chaired by uh, Michelle Morris. Um, and that meets monthly the third um, Thursday. Um, and it's actually this Thursday. So if you're interested in joining here, you can go to the website, sign up, and we'll, we'll get you the information. Um, so that was a quick run through of our updates. And now what I'd like to do is turn it over 
to uh, Peter and Jeff. I think what I'll do is um, stop sharing and I'm gonna let um, Peter and Jeff pick it up from here. All right, thanks, Diane. Um, I think I think I'm cued to to start. So we have a um, quite a bit of material to go through. We'll go through it. We'll try to vary the speed depending on what people are most interested in. Um, looking at the the screen of current attendees, I feel like a lot of us know a bit about I2B2. <laughs> so I'm going to skim through that material pretty quickly. What we're what we're here to talk about today is the integration of I2B2 and Transmart, and we have had these two platforms as part of the foundation for a very long time. And uh, this past year, we've been making our first steps in um, integrating the two platforms. So the, the last, year, last year, actually, we, we harmonized the data models. So both platforms used the same basic data model, but they did not know how to communicate using, using the same data model, but the, the data inside the model was stored in somewhat different formats. So, we are working on harmonizing that so we can actually share data between I2B2 and Transmart. And what we're gonna talk about today is why on earth you'd wanna do that. Um, I'm gonna start off by just telling you a little bit about what I2B2 is. I imagine that most of you know, so I'll run through this very quickly, but definitely put up your hand or put something in the chat or just jump in if you uh, are not familiar with some concept that I'm going through. Um, but I2B2 is, is kind of the, the, uh, query, the query building tool most frequently and, and kind of a data analytics platform that is used at over 200 institutions worldwide. And um, it's componentized, extensible. You can put your own ontologies, your own terminologies into it. You can, um, it's, it's a very, it is, the data model is very flexible. So you can, it, it, its uh, goal is to be able to ingest data from various sources very easily. And then it has a graphical query tool, which is, it's, there are other tools available for I2B2 as well, but that's the most famous one that makes it very easy for non-technical people to do queries. So that's the, that's the I2B2 side. And just very, very quickly, uh, the, there are many components of I2B2, we call them cells, and they all fit together to create the framework of I2B2. As I was saying, you can plug your own ontologies into I2B2. We have standardized ones now. We use the ACT ontology quite frequently. We have a demo ontology in I2B2. We, we have a Pocornet ontology that's a bit dated now, but you can create your own ontologies for your own types of data, even things that aren't typically in a clinical record like, uh, uh, like surveys. And then you can use the graphical query tool, which I'll go over briefly live um, to create queries. The data model uh, is a star schema, um, which is not the typical uh, schema for data models in medical informatics, but it, this, it was the first because ITB2 was the first platform out there. Um, and so most everything goes into this big fact table. And uh, there's an ontology table that kind of give semantic meaning to those facts by defining what the codes mean and how they fit together. Um, some applications of I2B2 include the uh, accrual to clinical trials network, which has you know, fit about 50 sites around the country. And there are other, other data networks too. That's kind of the most prominent example. And another thing that's nice about I2B2 is you can use the, the framework, the cells and the client to connect to other data models on the back end, including um, OMOP and Picornet. And now you can connect it to Transmart, but that actually uses the same data model. So what we're trying to do with I2B2 and Transmart, there are two sides of it. We want to be able to look at uh, Transmart data in I2B2 so we can build queries with, um, with I2B2's query tool using Transmart data. And then what Peter's going to talk about next is the second half of that, which is using I2B2 data in Transmart, so you can do more advanced graphical uh, analytics and breakdowns and whatnot in the Transmart client on I2B2 data out of the box. Um, so the this screenshot shows, and I'll show this live in just a second, it shows on, on the top, I don't know if you can see my pointer, but on the top it shows I2B2 demo data and the all of the components of that, the demographics, the diagnoses, the medications, the procedures. So that's the that's an ontology. And the ontology 
uh, matches up with a bunch of facts for 133 patients. This is the count of patients behind the ontology item. And then uh, below that, you see public studies, which is the tree that Transmart uses for Transmart data. And that can be made visible in I2B2 now. And you can see this is a COPD study. And you have access to biomarker data, endpoints, information about subjects. Um, and you'll notice here that we have gender up here with female and male, uh, 51 and 82, and sex down here with female and male with 30 and 28. So those are completely different data sets. Those have different number of patients behind them, different codes. So it's a completely separate um, entity, but it just it integrates with I2B2 and you can build queries on it. Um, and then this is this is the flip side that I'll I'll let Peter go into more detail on later. But uh, Transmar likewise has an ontology browser, and you can uh, now see the I2B2 data if you make it visible uh, to privileged users in I2B2. You can make it visible in Transmart. Um, so let me take a moment away from the PowerPoint and show some of this working live. Let's see, I'll maximize my screen. All right, so this is the I2B2 query tool. And this particular query tool is already connected to Transmart. But let me just uh, show a quick demo of how to use the query tool for anyone who's not familiar. You can drill down into all of these diagnoses. We recently rewrote, re recently being a year and a half ago now, I suppose, we rewrote find terms so that you can you know, find the uh, diagnoses and meds and whatnot that you want very quickly. So now I'm looking for, I've dragged over asthma. So if I run this query, it'll give me the count of patients with asthma, which is already there on the, on the right. It's 133. So not particularly any reason to run that query. But then we can say, uh, say we want patients on bronchodilators. Then um, we can... And we can switch back to the tree view and we can see where bronchodilators is in the tree. So I could pick other respiratory agents, um, but I'll just go ahead and pick bronchodilators. So now I have patients with asthma and, see the and there, uh, bronchodilators. <clears throat> and then if I want, I can pick a demographics item too. Like let's pick uh, gender, let's go with, uh, let's just pick females. So that will be. Um, you know, probably close to 51, but maybe a little bit less, um, because there are 77 patients on bronchodilators. Presumably, a lot of them have asthma if they're on bronchodilators. And so I'm just guessing that the count will be somewhere around 50. Um, then you click run, and you can pick all these options um, to look at the, the data broken down in different ways. I'm just going to do number of patients for expediency, and you get 35, so a little bit less than 50. And um, yeah, I think a lot of people on this call are familiar with that, so I won't, I won't spend more time on that component. Um, but we're going to try to have time for questions and answers uh, if you have questions about the query tool. So now if you make the Transmart data visible in I2B2, you can open the public studies tree and you can drill into the information in here. So we can, uh, for example, pick all of our patients with COPD. And then uh, we can pick only the, uh, the female patients with COPD. And then we can choose one, choose patients that have non-small cell adenocarcinomas. Just, just as an example of something that'll produce an interesting result. And um, well, let's add also something about forced expiratory, expiratory volume ratio. So let's say less than 100. So this does you know, support the value, the value entry that the ITB2 query tool has. And then we should be able to run a query on that. And my passwords are compromised. Um, yeah, so there are two. There are only two patients with an FEV less than 100 that particular diagnosis and who are female and who have chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So obviously this is just a toy example, 
and we are uh, in the in the coming year we're working on you know being able to do some more advanced queries with transmart data one challenge with transmart is that it doesn't have uh, time in the same way that i2b2 does all the facts in i2b2 have timestamps in transmart there are facts that are associated with timestamps for example you can have um you know white blood cell count at day zero at day three at day five and those are all separate facts so there's not a you know kind of a timestamp type of logic right now in transmart data they're just different facts to represent different times so we're we're uh, we're thinking through that problem in order to kind of bring in the temporal components of i2b2's query tool because there is an entire temporal query interface that I'm not going to spend time on today that would allow advanced queries. So those are some, that's one of the things we're looking at doing next year. Uh, oops, I think, I think I'm passing it to Peter now to talk about uh, Transmart a little bit. Yes, I believe I am. So let's see if I can share. Hopefully you can see my screen now. Yep, I can see it. So we're looking here at uh, the same server, but looking at it through the Transmart interface. And initially I've just um, connected using the default login. And so I'm here as a guest. I have the power to look at Transmart studies, but I do not have the power to look at the, at the ITB2 data. Um, reason being that Transmart data is typically, as it says, public studies. You know data typically as public studies and everybody should be allowed to see them. So there's no problem with the ITB2 interface looking. Um, but the ITB2 data could include patient data. And so for now it's restricted to admin users. So I need to just log out as guest, log in again as admin. Back to the analyze tab. And now we can see the ITB2 data. And so I can expand the transmart nodes. Bit bigger. So I can expand these transport nodes, and we saw those in the ITB2 interface already. And I can also expand the uh, demo data here. So we have the, the gender information, we have the, the diagnoses in uh, ITB2. I cannot work on this protected health information set because that's in a separate table that Transmart knows nothing about. Um, so Transmart doesn't know about ITB2's ways of storing data in other tables yet, we need to work on that. Um, but I can see the general ITB2 data, that's no problem. So we'll, just a quick guide of what Transmart does by comparison to the ITB2 interface. If I just take, um, let's see, let's take sex and just drop, uh, just drop the sex node in here, so cool. So we have all the patients grouped by sex. If I go to summary statistics, um, which is kind of a, a background display for transport, we can see the, the age range, um, sex range, and uh, race information for this set, and just a, a count of males and females at the bottom. We can drag other things in as well. And so if I go back, maybe do a more useful query. Patients with uh, COPD and the control patients from this study. So now we've we've got a a few differences showing up, and then I can drag something else in here, like uh, forced expiratory volume ratios. Is if you've got severe disease, yeah, it's it's way down. This is normal in the control group and in the the COPD group, you've got a much lower volume of air when you, you're breathing to see how hard you can breathe out. So that then appears in the summary. And this is one way to explore the data in Transmart. Just go to this view and take a look. Uh, another way is to go to the grid view and you can actually just see the data in the grid view and you can sort these columns and hide columns that you don't want. And uh, I'd explore that way. And then there are a bunch of other workflows that we can use to, to analyze. 
I can go back and I can do the same thing with uh, the ITB2 data. So if I now look at the uh, ITB2 data tree, I can take um, ID respiratory system. I think chronic obstructive diseases. There we go. Drag that one in and look at the summary statistics. Now I'm taking data from ITB2 and there are 133 patients in the uh, demo data set and they all have asthma. So they'll all be in this set somewhere. And um, we get an age range for them. We get the sex, but in this uh, case just gives M and F as the values because that's what ITB2 has stored. Um, we have some race definitions, which I guess look fine if you're from the USA. If you're from the UK, then seeing Asian and Indian separately looks weird. For us, Indians are Asians, and Eurasians are Orientals. <laughs> but that's just uh, the way the terminology goes. One oddity is that if we look down at these, we see that only 27% have asthma. That's not right. Um, 133 out of 133 have asthma, but the way the ITB2 data is stored, they have other things as well. And so we're going to have to change this number to be a percentage of the number of subjects rather than a percentage of the number of values, which is what Transmart currently has. And the way Transmart stores data, it doesn't matter in Transmart, but we'll need to, to fix it up for this. We find these oddities quite often when we look in the data now, looking at ITB2 data in Transmart and Transmart data in ITB2. Um, and so we're looking at cleaning those up. One thing we can't do at the moment is drag ITB2 data into a Transmart analysis workflow because there are too many data points in ITB2. You have multiple data points with different timestamps, as Jeff was saying. Uh, we need to, to change the way Transmart retrieves data so that it can cope with that. And we also need to change the data we load in Transmart so that it has timestamps and ITB2 can work with the timestamps and we can get um, plots with longitudinal data much more easily. It's been long in demand by the Transmart users and we're looking to do that next year. An example of one of the oddities, if I Go back and this this one has been uh, is being fixed. If I take this group of 18 to 34 year olds, and then I look at their summary statistics, um, we get some curious results. Um, this is a group of 18 to 34 year olds. Three of them are 18 years old. Four of them are 19 years old three 21-year-olds and two 22-year-olds and nobody else. And the reason for that is that the ITB2 demo data is a little old. It was defined in uh, 2010. And they've all had 11 or 12 birthdays since. <laughs> and so we're calculating their true age in 2022 here. And so a lot of them have dropped out of that set. Um, so I think ITB2 are going to give a birthday to their data every year to, to fix that issue. Okay, so basically you can do the same explorations. You can go and, and drop other nodes in and look at the data here. And you can also go back to the grid view and look at the raw data underneath and uh, check what's happening. And we're looking to add new analyses, uh, time-based analyses, and uh, getting the ITB2 data into workflows. And we'll be exploring how the data looks in both platforms and making a few more changes as we go. Okay, that was it for the, the demo. Back to the slides. Do we have the slide deck back? Yeah, I, I was sharing. I was sharing the slides. I'm happy to to do that again. Okay. Or if you want to share them on your own screen, yeah, you, you share them because yeah, I've, okay. I've got three them to be yours again. Okay. No problem. Um, let's see, play from current slide. No, that's not the slide that I wanted. Number 16 you had there is, is fine. 16? Oh, right. I started in the wrong place. OK. This this is Peter's, <clears throat> Peter's next presentation. <laughs> so we have a transport release 19.1 coming out with uh, the things that we've been putting in so far. Um, that Jeff was mentioning with the data model 
and some other cleanups. And then we'll be looking at, at doing some more work in the next year and looking to get some more releases coming out thick and fast, we hope, as new features appear. Next slide, please. So just to, to sum up where we started on this, we had a Transmart 19 release a couple of years ago now. Um, that was a major cleanup of the code and an upgrade to Grails 2.5 and Java 8. Uh, cleanup, a lot of it was done by Bert Beckwith at uh, Harvard. Um, we've changed to use uh, better ways to have all the JavaScript and style sheets and the images held in, uh, in Transmart. That's made life much easier for developing. Updated versions of all the database drivers and all the other dependencies. Um, and then we worked through adding the ITV2 basic schemas and cleaning up the common tables so that all the columns and all the tables looked the same between Transmart and ITB2. Um, we set it to use date and time values, which is lovely, but all of those are just the time that the study was loaded. So they're not useful values in, tra in uh, Transmart yet. And we cleaned up the ETL scripts and performance and fixed some bugs. And there's been a lot more of that um, going on now. Next slide, please. So the, the uh, most important thing that we've done in Transmart 19.1 is we now have the full I2B2 schema. What we had before was the things that Transmart used were made the same in both. And then if we wanted to run both together, you'd have to install all the extra bits for I2B2, which was pretty horrible. So Jeff and I spent uh, quite a bit of time early this year going through the full I2B2 schema on Postgres and Oracle and comparing it to what Transmart had on Postgres and Oracle. And now, if you install Transmart 19.1, you can then install I2B2 on top of it. You have everything you need to just drop I2B2 on top. And that's how we made that demo server. We just loaded Transmart, added the I2B2 demo data, and ran the I2B2 uh, interface on it. So as you see, we can support I2B2 and Transmart data in the same database, or you can just run Transmart on it or run I2B2 on it. Uh, we've had to add some extra tables. Um, if you run a query, then Transmart was very kindly using the same tables as ITB to, to store queries. And that's kind of dangerous because some of the background data might be different. And so we have separate tables. There's a QT table for query tables for ITB2 and there's a QTM for queries for Transmart. And we can then run queries in both platforms and compare them without the risk that they might upset each other. There are a bunch of control tables that do things like a list of all the studies and those have been moved to the ITB2 metadata scheme which is where they should be and we'll probably move a few more as we we go through but the, the basic ones have been put in there to clean up and uh, yeah we compared everything in the schemas and we pretty much match everything that ITB2 has I think Jeff there were one or two cases where they were oddities in ITB2 and Postgres and Oracle didn't agree with each other and we just left those as they are um, everything works. It's things like the indexes they get used and they've been tweaked differently on each platform. Uh, but basically, yeah, you install Transmart, install the Transmart database, you have an ITV2 database you're free to use. Next slide, please. Uh, other things that we've done in Transmart, we've added some extra targets for loading uh, metadata. So you can um, now just, when you're curating data sets and making them available, you can also make data for the Browse tab available, and it will load up the Browse tab and let you search for studies. Um, if there's any rubbish in the data you get from, say, Geo as a data source, you can clean it up and put out the clean version as your, your Browse tab metadata. Uh, we've cleaned up the reference annotation. So if you have multiple gene expression platforms or multiple species with RNA-seq, you can now have one reference annotation file that lists all the platforms you're going to use. Um, which cleans up a lot of naming in the, the studies. We have some bug fixes for RNA-seq. Um, one of them is performance bug fix where some RNA-seq data sets would try to kill the system, just take so long to load. Um, that's been fixed. Another one was if you have multiple RNA-seq data files, that wasn't working in Transmart 19.0, and that's now been fixed. Um, we've added a single ETL target for study, so you'll be able to load study. Um, if you're downloading data, it will look to see the data sources for RNA-seq, clinical data, and everything else for the study and find them. Um, if you've got your own data, you can put it in the appropriate place in the right directory, and it will find them and run the load for you. 
One issue that we've long had in Transmart is sites running with a lot of clinical data, very large studies, and yeah, multiple large studies, have found it's very difficult to load the data. It can load very slowly and take forever. And when we were loading the ITB2 demo data, uh, we loaded Transmart studies and that was fine. We loaded ITB2 data and that was fine. We went to calculate the um, node counts for the ITB2 data in Transmart and it ran for about two hours, which is strange because the ITB2 calculation runs in under a minute. And so we have basically rewritten that in Transmart to use the ITB2 methods. Uh, Transmart built giant queries which fill up memory and sort on disk and take forever. And ITB2 uses temporary tables. And so we're, we're using temporary tables and that speeds up clinical data loading for Transmart automatically at least 100 times faster for those cases. Um, next slide. Uh, so now Transmart 19 will support Ubuntu 20. Uh, we'll support Ubuntu 22 when it comes out in April. Uh, we support up to Postgres 14, but Transmart has been routinely used on any version of Postgres from 9.5 upwards. I know there are some sites running older versions and they've never upgraded their Postgres probably missing out on some performance there, but it seems to be working for them. Um, but we don't test against anything older. Uh, we've updated the, the metadata for genes, proteins, and diseases. So the latest Medline diseases, mesh diseases came out uh, a few weeks ago. We're updating those. Updating the install scripts and cleaning them up so that they um, can be easier to manage and maintain. Currently, they install on Ubuntu. We'll try and provide install scripts for some of the other popular operating system versions as well. And we're looking to produce Docker instances. We'll try them on Transmart 19 first and then make them available for 19.1 and the current code base to make it easier to install and test things. Um, and we'll do that with multiple Docker instances. So you'd have one for the web interface, one for the database, where hopefully you actually run your own local Postgres and install the data on there. Um, also, Solar, the ETL tools, um, the loader for the genes, proteins, and diseases, and the R interface if you want to use that and keep those as separate Docker instances to, to run. So we have groups in uh, Europe who are very keen to test this. It's nice when you do this to have enough users who can test that things really work for you. And uh, look forward to trying those out as we, we look to do the release March, April time. Thanks. Over to you, Jeff. All right. Thanks, Peter. I'm gonna see we have 12 minutes left. I'm going to try to talk a little bit about I2B2's upcoming release um, in <clears throat> less than that, so we have some time for questions. Um, I, I, I wanted to clarify, I think we both, Peter and I, were saying next year a lot of times. We're talking about the next fiscal year, so that will begin late spring. So uh, we're wrapping up all the things that we've done this year and are trying to get out I2B2 and Transmart releases almost in parallel in late March-ish. And, um, <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll get hard to work and for furthering some of this integration stuff. Um, so I'm just going to talk a bit about the upcoming release of I2B2, which I've talked about a couple of times on these calls. So I'm mostly going to focus on the, the new things and the current status of things. Um, the last I2B2 release was put out almost two years ago at this point. Um, it had a lot of changes in it, but since then we've been, you know, we've been focusing on like, <clears throat> on some of this integration stuff, improved documentation, um, uh, ontologies, things like that, rather than core software release. So we are, uh, we're getting ready to finally roll out our core software release uh, update um, in a couple of months. Um, I, I took out most of my slides about 1.7.12, which is the current release, because I've talked about it a lot. Uh, I did want to leave in one slide just to remind people these are the things that 1.7.12 has that weren't in the previous version. If you have not installed it, perhaps you want to. It does things with red cap integration. It has much faster fine terms. Installation is easier and it has some concept counting scripts. The concept counting scripts in 12 
are, are faster than the original ones in Transmart, but they're not particularly scalable. And we've got a fix for that in 13. Um, I, I also wanted to highlight that <clears throat> we've been working in our partnership with Dell, we've been working on improving the documentation for, and we, we've harmonized the data model between the two platforms and created a bunch of documentation on that. And we have some installation guides for uh, I2B2 and for data science, I2B2. So there's one that's like I2B2 plus Transmart, one that's I2B2 plus Shrine. And just looking at our Google Analytics data, not a lot of people have clicked on those. So I, I thought it'd be worth throwing out. Just check it out. Go to community.i2b2.org uh, and, um, and halfway down the page or so, it says documentation. You can try out the... Uh, the install guides and the common data model guide. So here's what's coming in 13. Uh, this is a slide I probably should have showed at the beginning, but this is just to highlight that uh, we're integrating I2B2 and Transmart. And the first step in that is going to be, the first pass at that is going to be in, in 13. Um, so we can now do cohort design, powerful cohort design on Transmart data and advanced analytics on I2B2 data. Um, uh, the other big feature that, um, one of the reasons that 13 has taken a long time to get out is we spent about a year trying to get a uh, single sign-on working in I2B2. So uh, we and a group at University of Pittsburgh have done a lot of, a lot of work in uh, SAML authentication in I2B2. And you can see there's, it, it does work now. So when you uh, log into I2B2. If you set it up for integrated login, there's a button that says, well, this is sign with PIT Passport, but you can set it for your own institution to, uh, to switch to your own institution's uh, SAML or Shibboleth login. And then you, you log in with your institutional login, and then it takes you to I2B2. So it, and it still uses all of the I2B2 user tables and access tables and whatnot. So you can still you know, restrict the users based on projects and, and uh, different levels of data access. But, but now the actual authentication can be handled through, through SAML. And um, we're, we're, we've kind of gotten this working. We're testing it and working on integrating into the core, the core code now. Um, we also have a bunch of uh, kind of incremental improvements. The the uh, patient counting scripts are much faster now, and they're kind of similar to what Peter was talking about. They they struggle a little bit on like the ACT, um, RX norm alphabetical ontology, but on pretty much everything else, they they can count pretty rapidly and uh, get you counts of everything in the ontology. And, uh, and there are some reporting tables that track this over time and give you something that's obfuscated that you can export and share, assuming that your IRB allows sharing of the identified counts. But it has the same level of obfuscation that, that Shrine queries and I2B2 obfuscated queries do. So it's fairly shareable. Um, and then on the right, there's an example of some, some visualizations with this data that is not included in the core code, but the code to do that visualization is also available. Uh, we we have in, in, excuse me we we have uh, synthesized we have taken Cynthia data, which is a synthetic data set uh, generator created by MITRE, um, and they created a synthetic Massachusetts data set that follows kind of the population characteristics of Massachusetts and. Uh, and we have loaded that into I2B2 as an additional data set. So instead of having 133 patients, you can have 100,000 test patients if you want to. And this will enable a lot more testing of the scalability of features and uh, creating sample queries that are a little bit more meaningful. Um, we've also done some work to improve the database, the database upgrade process, because we've we worked in the last release on improving the core server install process. Uh, we are doing some tweaking of the uh, user interface. We're adding more tabs to make uh, some features more visible. Uh, this, you know, this is in parallel to the, the, the rewrite of the uh, query tool that um, the Griffin's team is working on. And it will, uh, the current 
query tool will continue to live on for a while and and this will this will make it a bit more usable for for the advanced features and whatnot you can easily get to temporal queries and timelines uh, we're working on more bundle documentation we've included the new act ontology uh, <clears throat> developed at pit and uh, lots of bug fixes so that's uh, that's 13 and it'll it'll dovetail nicely with transmart because with 13 and transmart 19.1 you can uh, you can share some of your transmart data and ITB2 data with each other. I, I also always have this slide. If, if you'd like to develop your own feature for ITB2, please uh, please do. You can send us a pull request. Um, you have to fill out a little certificate of origin to certify that you have the right to share the code in an open source project. But uh, we're we we are definitely eager to have any help we can get in improving the core platform. Um, and there have been many, many people who have worked on ITV2 over the years, and I always have this slide at the end. But that that's, uh, I think that's my full update, and it took me a few minutes longer than I hoped. But I think we do still have five minutes for questions. Um, so I suppose Diana can hand it back over to you to facilitate questions if you'd like. You can um, you can unmute yourself and ask your question. You can put something in the chat box. Love to to hear if you have questions about what was covered or if you have anything else. Hello, um, this is uh, Andreas from uh, Schuif Hospital in Lausanne in Switzerland. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Okay, cool. Um, I have one question for I2P2. Um, is there something that uh, lets us track the usage of I2P2? So one thing we would like to know is, you know, we, we have a lot of users, but we don't really know what kind of variables they are using. And so to detect what is needed by our users, we would like to investigate, let's say, what kind of queries they are doing. Is there something like this available in I2P2? Oh, I think I think it, it was. Did you just post a question in the forum? Yeah, <laughs> I yeah, I, I asked there, but I'm not sure if it's the right forum because it's more of installation help. So I, I profit from the fact that I participate in this call uh, today. <laughs> um, the the short answer is that all of that all of that data are stored in in the Q, in the QT tables in I two B two so it is recorded yeah. um, in uh, the, there's the, in the shrine side there's a data steward app which allows you in some ways yeah. to look at what queries were run I am not aware of any yeah. actual like graphical dashboard that lets you look at this yeah. right now I think that would be a great community project. Um, it shouldn't be too hard if you're on the SQL side to do some uh, SQL scripts to analyze mm -hmm. what terms are appearing most frequently. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyone jump in, Mike or Sean or anyone who knows if there is if there is a dashboard to do this because that would be that, you're not the first person to request that. But I don't think hey, we pursued that. Yeah. Hey Peter. Um, so as far we're, as we're going to start looking at the queries next week, Jeff. We're, uh, next. Yeah, we're going to need something like that ourselves because we need to compare the transmart and ITBT queries. Mm -hmm. We may just try to make something that's generally useful. Mm. Yeah, as Jeff was saying, everything's in the QT table that will show you like what queries are run. Uh, there's also in the PM table, there's whoever logged into the ITBT system. So you have a list of that. So if someone logged in but didn't actually run a query, then you could tally that, but of course, like Jeff said, you have to do it on the SQL side. Hey, thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah, I do think that would make a very good community project. It's got all the right properties for a community project in that, you know, it's not, it can, it can work off just that one table and, um, you know, it's, a, it's not easy. I mean, it'd be, you know, it'd be something that folks would find challenging, I'm sure, but it's definitely all there in the QT table. Um, it's just a question of um, getting the extract and that'd be a beautiful program to write, you know, to extract it and kind of put it on a nice graph. And stuff. Thank you.
any other questions for TB2 or Transmart or the combination thereof? You know, I'd be curious if um, there's anyone on the call that um, really looking at the ITB2 and Transmart integration work that we're doing, you know, if there uh, are folks that are, are thinking about in the future as we, as this progresses of, of actually using the two applications together and some use cases that, um, that it could solve. I know, Sean, you were, you were talking about using Transmart as a, a, a way to, um, to support the recover project, for, for an example. Absolutely. So Transmart excels at um, looking at clinical studies. You can use I2B2 to look at clinical studies, but it doesn't have, but, you know, because I2B2 is geared towards um, data that's, um, many repeats over time, essentially. So EHR data usually comes in as like diagnosis that every visit um, will be recorded. And so you'll have 10 diagnoses, all the same, but over at different time periods for, different, for the same patient. Uh, laboratories, of course, are happening in time sequences and medication prescriptions are in time sequences. So EHR data is usually these time sequences. Uh, that's different than, uh, you know, case report forms, which is what clinical trials are usually uh, ingested in, which um, don't have that same, you know, they don't repeat. And so you can do analysis in Transmart that takes advantage of that, that takes advantage of the fact that you don't need to worry about these temporal sequences interfering with your analysis and you have things at a certain uh, time point, which is when the patient visit occurred. So that, um, that means that you can do a lot of very interesting analysis oriented towards clinical trial uh, outcomes. And that type of analysis is supported in Transmart. So if you want to do an analysis of a clinical trial, it's a great thing to be able to do in Transmart. If you want to then take the clinical trial data and run it against the patients who are in their EHR data and, for example, derive new computed phenotypes based upon the clinical trial data, then um, you can do that in, in, in I2B2. And so, and of course, you know, do queries that combine the um, clinical data and the, um, the EHR data and the real world data with the Transmark clinical trial data. So um, that, and that's exactly the situation we have in Recover which is that we have real world data and we have the clinical study data that's collected through case report forms from the patients as common data elements. So, um, so that's definitely a good use case. Um, but anything that I think combined, you know, where your institution is hosting um, clinical studies that can be made not public, by the way, as in public, to, but at least that are, have, the IRB allows it to be shared within the institution, for example, the data to be shared within the institution. And of course, it's all, um, you know, follows the same de-identified scheme as, as all the data that can be done in, in, in I2B2 and Transmart. Then um, the, you know, you can combine clinical study data and, you um, electronic medical record and other real world data queries in a common platform. So it's really, it kind of allows you to switch between the two, take advantage of clinical study and trial data and the type of analysis that Transmart allows, but then do unified queries of the EHR data and represent those as timelines and so forth, which is more appropriate for that kind of time series data that's available with the clinical trial data. Um, it is important that you record the time and date that the clinical, the case report form, of course, is collected from the patient. Uh, so, you know, so it can fit on, you know, in an EHR analysis. So if one hasn't been recording that in case report forms, one needs to use an estimate of when that um, data applies to the patient.
It might be interesting to get, you know, a few a few folks together to join a, um, a, a kind of a use case um, group to really talk about putting together some use cases. Because I think a lot of the talk that we, a lot of the stuff we do when we talk about the integration of the two is very technical. It's at a, a level of, okay, that sounds great, but how is it really going to be used? So we can, um, we should really think about that. Any other questions, thoughts about anything at all? Are there things that you think we should be doing differently? Are there things you want us to bring to some of these meetings? Um, topics you'd like to see presented at the, at the September meeting? As you can tell, I'm pretty excited about September. I want to get January over with and move on with the year. Okay. All right. Seeing no questions, then I guess we'll um, we'll wrap it up for the for today, and um, hope to see you back uh, uh, in the February meeting. Bye, everyone. Have a great day.